What's going on y'all? This is Alexander with Guns.com and today we're digging into a military surplus rifle. It's one of my favorite things, getting to see these old kind of service workhorses. We have a German Gewehr 1888. We're gonna talk a little bit about the history, where it kind of fits in, in service, and uh, how something that's so old has lasted so long. I am always super excited to get to kind of mess around with military surplus firearms, especially when they have such a deep rooted history that plays into the overall shaping of military firearms technology. And that's exactly what we have with the 1888 Gewehr. We have to rewind the clocks back to the end of the 1800s uh, when rifle technology was going through a major change. In 1886, the nation of France adopted the 1886 Lebel rifle, which was a standard setting rifle because it moved away from black powder and got into smokeless powder. It was a huge advancement for the time. It increased the velocity, the range, the accuracy, uh, and really pushed that particular rifle far ahead of all of the other service rifles for the other countries. In 1886, as the Lebel came into full production, the Germans decided that they needed a new rifle to replace the 1871 Mauser. In 1886, the German uh, nation kind of put together this commission of different folks who had different ideas, designs, and innovation into building a new service rifle. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily designed by one guy, and that's why it was denoted as the 1888 Commission Rifle. But what really set this rifle apart for the Germans was this was the first smokeless powder uh, rifle to enter into service. It also fed off of the man liquor uh, in block clip system, which sped up reloads, made it a lot easier to get more rounds down range quicker. And along with that smokeless powder, he had better range, better accuracy, uh, and it set a standard for rifles going forward. Now, the 1888 does not get the same love that the 1898 Gewehr would get, which was a heavily influenced Paul Mauser design. But this rifle really was the first major step into moving into the modern era of, of really service firearms for the Germanic Empire. And it's, it's sad that people don't know that much about it, but there are so many conflicts that the 1888 ended up in, um, whether it was the Sino-Japanese War, the Boxer Rebellion, but the rifle made it all over the world, served in all these different conflicts, um, and not a lot of people know much about it. So let's get into the design. This wasn't just a new rifle design, it was also a new cartridge for the Germanic Empire. So along with this 1888, commission rifle, you have the M88 cartridge, which was a rimless bottleneck 8mm rifle cartridge that used that smokeless powder, gave an increased range over what was being used previous with black powder, um, and fit perfectly into those in-block clips, making those reloads, cycling through rounds much faster. Now getting into the individual aspects of the rifle. You have a modified Mauser bolt, um, and, and the Mauser action is iconic. It's a really awesome firearm design still used in modern production for bolt actions today. Um, it is a cock on open design. Uh, it's one of the kind of patented uh, attributes that you would see in, in Mauser bolts. Uh, and you have that traditional kind of Mauser release where you just pull that out and you can pull the bolt out of the rifle. Moving on from that, you have a man liquor style of magazine. There's a hole in the bottom of the magazine. That in block clip would just fall out. The magazine's now clear and you're ready to throw in the next, making that reload so much more quick. And that particular aspect of the Gewehr 88 moving into the Gewehr 98 would end up being what really dethroned or exposed the weaknesses of the 1886 Lebel. Moving forward from that, we have this barrel, and this is one of the more forward-thinking uh, kind of technologies that didn't necessarily work out exactly how they wanted it to, but it shows that even for 1888, they were thinking ahead. Um, the barrel is actually a free float style where it goes all the way back to the receiver and this thick shroud 
houses that barrel. The point for that is that the shroud being hooked up to the actual stock, you wouldn't have direct pressure against the barrel and it wouldn't mess with barrel harmonics. You would be more accurate. Great in theory, obviously something that is utilized with a lot of modern firearm designs now. However, having this barrel shroud enclosed the way that it is, it would get water trapped inside and then there would be rust on the inside of the barrel and you couldn't really clean it. So it was a little bit detrimental to the overall design, but still the thought process for the late 1800s was really awesome. Um, as far as service goes, this rifle would serve as the main standard issue firearm up until 1898. Most of these were rechambered for 7.92 Mauser, or 8 millimeter Mauser. You can see that with the uh, S that's marked on the barrel, uh, just to denote that it was refitted for that hotter ammunition, keeping it in relevance, much like the LaBelles did with the French. Um, and the firearm would continue service all the way through the late 1940s into the 1950s with the Israeli-Palestinian wars. So the rifle saw a lot of service throughout pretty much every single continent um, for a very, very long time. And to see something like this, this particular receiver was built in 1891. To hold something like this in your hands, uh, to know all the different conflicts or the battlefields that it's seen, uh, it's really special. It's so one of the cool things that we have here at guns.com. There's a wide selection of military surplus firearms like this. I'm always amazed to see firearms that are well over 100 years this one over 130 years, having survived so many conflicts so long, getting to kind of shine a little bit of light on the importance of the development, where it fits into history. Uh, it's just an amazing thing to get to hold in your hands. As always, we here at guns.com are trying to be your one-stop shop for all your firearms needs. We have a huge selection of military classics, military surplus firearms. Be sure to check out that tab on our website. And uh, thank you for taking the time to appreciate this rifle with me. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll check you on the next one. Hey!